Hey everyone, it's Sunday the 13th of August and it is uh, 10 to 5 in the afternoon. Right, today's video. Um, I want to talk about the moped because I'm having all sorts of problems with that and actually one of them was my own silly fault. Um, dummy duster. And there it is. My duster stroke sweat rag because it's bloody hot up here. It's lovely outside. Loved it. It's actually more comfortable outside than it is up here. Anyway, I'm going to talk about the flat. You've probably noticed that there's a big gap here now where my Sony TV was. Well, I sold that about half an hour ago. Some um, young boys actually come and picked it up. Um, I don't know. It was in 15, 16, the oldest one of the two. Anyway. Um, and I'll explain why later in the video I've decided to get rid of that. Um, I've also got a bunch of items that I want to uh, show you. All related to my favourite hobbies. So I've got some die cast, I've got some Lego. I've got another, I was going to say a barricade lamp, but technically it's not for the railway. So I'll show you that as well. And I've got another bicycle, another vintage bicycle, which is going to be in my keep collection. I've got too many in the keep collection, so I've actually put a bunch of them up on the marketplace and not had one message. It seems to be really difficult to sell bikes at the minute, even cheap ones. I sell them cheap. Ridiculously cheap sometimes. Even my stepdad has said I'm selling them too cheap. But anyway, pardon me. Let's start with the moped before we get into everything else. So, about three weeks ago, my exhaust decides that the um, factory issue hole wasn't enough and it needed one in the side. So, that got really loud. I mean, I only got about half a mile to mum's that day when it went from its normal tone to an extremely loud tone. So, you know, I continued to ride it to mum's, I rode at home, and then I rode it to mum's the next day, and by that time it had gotten even louder because the hole had got bigger, because more rust had fallen out. So I did a temporary repair, because I couldn't afford the exhaust at the time. Uh, my stepdad had some, what I call, steel stick putty. It's a grey putty, and it comes in like a, a sausage shape, if you like, and right down the middle is another like a black putty, so it's a two-part putty that you have to mix together. Um, you can just, you know, just basically do that like you're playing around a plasticine. Um, so we did that, pulled it all flat to make like a sheet of it and put it over the exhaust and over where the hole was. Then I got a, uh, a Pepsi can, I cut the top and the bottom off, cut down the side so I could wrap it around the exhaust. I did that, put two Jubilee clips on it, and that, um, it still didn't sound right, but it made it much more better to ride. Or much more pleasant to ride, because that was so loud that it was even bad for my ears. <clears throat> so, a week after I did that, I went and lost the keys. But I still haven't found them. Um, so I thought, right, as soon as I get paid, I'm going to order some parts. Because I also need some rear brake shoes for the rear brake. It's a drum brake on that one. And you have to take the exhaust off to take the back wheel off. And of course you've got to take the back wheel off to change your brake shoes. So I thought we'll do a whole lot at once. I'll just buy everything I need. The new ignition barrel, the exhaust, um, and the brake shoes. So I actually ordered it all from the same eBay seller. So it all came, actually I ordered at seven o'clock Wednesday morning this week, and it was here by 9 o'clock Thursday morning. Which I thought was bloody good. i still got to leave positive feedback for that. So, I changed the ignition bow, easy peasy. When I say that, it was a bit time consuming because I had to take all the flipping front plastics off. Um, and one of the bolts on the ignition barrel had been changed for an Allen bolt, which... It's not a bad thing because it made it easier to take it off but on ignition switches and I didn't know this it was my neighbour that was telling me they have special bolts that when you put them in you shear the heads off that way if the bike 
or someone wants to try and steal the bike, they can't easily take those bolts out to take your ignition barrel off to circumvent the steering lock. And I had one of those on there. They're not impossible to get out, but they're very time consuming, which I'm assuming is the reason behind them. Um, and all I used was a big flathead screwdriver. I just wedged it in there, in the recess where the bolt head was, the round one, not the hexagon bit. That sheared off, obviously. And just took the bolt off, or the nut off. And that's got a thread lock on it as well, just to add to it. And of course the ignition barrel, the new one, came with two new bolts. So once I'd actually spent, I don't know, 10 minutes trying to get that bolt off, you know, it took me about five just to bolt the new one on. It's two new bolts. And like I said, you just keep, you literally just keep tightening them up until that head shears off. That's all you've got to do. And then it's just two plug-in connectors, a four-pin plug and a single one. And that is it. Job done. And just put your plastics back together. And that was it. I got me peg rideable again, you know. I could start it. <laughs> I did look into trying to hotwire it temporarily, but... I couldn't find the information I wanted, oddly. Well, maybe not oddly, maybe that's a good thing. And I just thought, in the end, I just thought it's not worth trying to hotwire it and risking blowing up, you know, the uh, computer module and whatnot. And I thought, so I'll just wait a couple of days until I get that um, ignition valve. So, yeah, that bit went fine. Um, and I thought, right, I'll take the exhaust over to Mum's because at least I'll have a nice flat road I can lay on over there, not gravel like I've got here. Um, plus, I've got access to a lot more tools, so if I do shear a bolt or something, I can fix it easier. So that's what I did. Took the old exhaust off, that was a little bit of a pig. Um, and actually discovered that the bolts that go into your head and your engine your exhaust port were not the original ones someone had changed them at some point they may have done that when they put the um, upgraded TT sports exhaust on it um, but yeah got that off and the old one has been a bit of a pig to get on so I've got my stepdad's help um, but unfortunately with all the bolting on and bolt unbolting it trying to get the new exhaust to fit we finally did get it in place and we were putting the bolts back in one of the um, threaded holes on the head itself that the bolt screws into broke. Half of it actually broke off so you couldn't put your bolt in. There was nothing to screw it into. And uh, I just had a feeling that was going to happen, which is one of the reasons I actually bought, I think they were like three pounds something, a pair of brand new studs and nuts to go in the head. In okay, case so I shared one. We didn't shear one of them, we broke the bloody hole that it goes into. I, I knew something like that was going to happen. So that means, <clears throat> even though the new exhaust is bolted on, but because one bolt is missing and it's not bolting it square, so, you know, I need a new head. Um, and because it's two-stroke, not a four-stroke, I was always told from when I was little that you shouldn't ride two strokes without an exhaust because they rely on the back pressure and you can do damage to the engine and whatnot so I've actually left it over at mum's because I've got a new head bought a new head piston the whole kit for 121 quid I think it was on eBay but I decided when I was actually browsing eBay at Mum's, because this, this is one of the reasons I set the computer up in the workshops so if I needed to order a bike part or something for one of the mopeds that I'm working on, because I've still got the two resto projects to do, I can just, you know, basically turn around and go and use the computer. It's for convenience more than anything. But anyway, I found that uh, you can get a 70cc a big ball kit for it. So guess what I went and bought? because <laughs> my thinking was it's not actually that much more price wise than an ordinary 50cc head cylinder I, should say. I keep calling it a head but it's not just a cylinder um, so I thought I've got to take the old one off to replace it it's going to leave the piston exposed 
it's not difficult to change a piston when it's like that. The trickiest bit is going to be getting the head back on the piston because we haven't got the tools for that. But I have seen the Coke can trick so I might have to utilise another drinks can. <laughs> um, so I thought, sod it, let's just upgrade it. <clears throat> so I think this is exactly what we're going to do. So I'm just waiting for that to arrive. If I'm lucky that will arrive tomorrow, if not it should arrive at some point this week. The only ass is, because of the way modern mopeds are designed, like my Yamaha jog, to get to the actual engine to do something like this, you've got to take basically the rear end out. <laughs> you've got to take it out of the frame. Because on that, the engine, you know, you're basically your engine and your gearbox and everything is all in one on a motorbike, isn't it? Then you've got your wheel assembly, or your drive transmission and your wheel, all of that is all one unit on them. So to get to your cylinder, I've got to take all of that out. Sounds like a chore to me, but it's probably not going to be as bad as I'm thinking. I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to strip all the plastics off. If I feel up to it tomorrow, I might do that anyway, so it's prepped, ready. Um, I'm going to get a tin of hammerite as well, because I noticed there's some surface rust on my frame, so I'm going to do that, hammerite it, and make it last a bit longer, won't it? Because I actually really do like that moped, it's a lovely little thing to ride. Um, yeah, so... With all the plastics off, we can get to all the bolts we need to then, can't we? Um, I'm a bit miffed as well because I've got these <laughs> at Alsham Car Boot and I was, just for the giggles I was going to put these on the side of the moped just little amber I suppose you could use them as side repeaters or marker lights but I noticed that uh, somehow, and I don't know how one of the wires have been pulled off of this and it's a sealed unit so I can't get in there without uh, being destructive. There's no point just putting the one on. I might actually look on eBay and see if I can find some more cheap. They're probably quite cheap and brand new. Because all I'd have to do is just... They're LED, so I should think the electrics on the moped wouldn't be um, too bad at running them. Even better if I'd perhaps put an, an LED tail bulb in it. <coughs> Never mind. Um... Yeah, so that's going to be fun. <laughs> I'm sort of looking forward to it because I'm getting an upgrade, you know, and at the same time I'm dreading it because of the amount of work that's going to be involved. But, quite for it's going to be worth it. i just got to remember, I've got to run it in. You've always got to run in a new piston. You can't just go ahead and just go flat out because you're going to blow it again. Although I haven't blown mine, but uh, yeah. And I was also talking to my neighbour and he said it's always a good idea to put a new piston in with a new head anyway. <clears throat> you know? And it, actually it does make sense because when I thought about it I thought yeah it doesn't really make sense to put an old piston in with a new cylinder, you know. So I thought yeah that actually does make sense anyway. Hopefully the gudgeon pin's got to come off the um Connecting rod all right. <clears throat> it should be fine, you know. I don't use cheap two stroke oil in it. I've used like car lube. I use decent stuff. I'm going to have to go and get a sponge just to wipe that down. There's some marks or something on it. Do a bit of dusting as well, I think. I'll do that later. Right, next subject. Why did I get rid of the big TV that I've had for the last two years? Well, I was actually doing some thinking um, two days ago actually, and I made a decision. Something I've been thinking about for uh, at least the last sort of year, six months to a year, something like that, I've been thinking about it. I finally made the decision. I want to put a Lego City back in this lounge. So, I thought, 
I'm going to need some serious room in this flat. So there's going to be a lot of stuff going. Know anybody that wants some PS2 games? PS2 console, PS1 console, PS1 games. I've got a bunch of those. Um, I know someone that will probably want the um, Nintendos back. My um, little brother. And I might... Um, I might actually message him later so he can message me to see if there's any games that he wants. Um, and there's also a friend of mine, I'm going to see if he wants any games first. Then whatever's left, I'll probably put on Marketplace or something. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I just don't use them. Seriously. Everything has been set up here, including that TV. It was all set up there for, what, two years? I never once used one of these consoles. And I am now literally at the point to where I'm thinking, why? I mean, I've still got that little voice in my head saying, no, don't get rid of it. You like it. You want it. It's vintage stuff. Keep it. Bollocks to that. I'm done. <laughs> it's too much hassle. I might actually keep the PS1 and set that up on the TV in the bedroom. That's a might. Um, but yeah, the PS2 can definitely disappear. And like I said, my brother will probably have the uh, Nintendos back. I've got 64 and a SNES, I believe. It's a SNES. Um, and I did actually get the SNES to work, so... Although it's been collecting dust again, so it might stop working. <laughs> um, yeah. I've got CDs here. I might just get rid of all the CDs because I don't really listen to them. I've got a few favourites here. I mean, I've got some CDs over there. I need to do a bit of rearranging in the bedroom as well. I need to clear both my cupboards, basically. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a link to eBay, my eBay, in the description down below. And while we're talking about the description down below, there will be links to my Discord server, my Twitch channel, and my other two YouTube channels, so feel free to check those out as well. Please and thank you. You know, I swear I sometimes I forget my please and thank yous. <laughs> Anywho, that is what I want to do in here. Um, the stereo can stay. The, so the two sofas here, the chairs, when you want to call them, I don't really want to get rid of them, but if I can't make things work in the bedroom, then I might have to. Because that big white bench I've got running down the wall in the bedroom, I'm going to cut it right down so I can just basically get the one main TV on it. That's it. Um, so I might actually get rid of that CRT TV as well. You know, I will. You know, I'll just get rid of it. Get rid of it, it's not being used. I've got a DVD player down there, a nice Sony one in black. And a VHS player. I need to check that they work. They did work when they were plugged in here. But like, neither of them have been used for years. I mean, I didn't even use them before I put them up here, so. Um, I keep looking around to see if there's anything else. There's a few things I'm going to give to a friend of mine. You know, try and, uh, well, they'll be useful for his flat. Like, I've got a coffee table over there. You could probably sit that somewhere. Um, might be able to put his TV on, actually, beside his bed. Anyway, I'll probably talk more on that in a minute, but I do need to just switch the camera around so I can sit down. There's a bag of bits over there. A few other bits and some Lego on the floor, so I'm going to get all organised for that and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. It's been about half an hour. For me, anyway. <clears throat> so. Uh, yeah. Stuff that I want to show you. Um, I'm going to start with what a friend of mine um, bought up for me. Now, I did buy these off of him. There was um, four items. 
five items, sorry, but I only bought three of them. He threw two tablets in for nothing. Um, I'll start with those then. So, I have got an Amazon Fire tablet, which I actually quite like this. And I have signed in with my Amazon account as well, so all the apps and everything is working. Even Alexa is working on this. Alexa! She shuts off if she doesn't hear anything. Good. Right. So, um, yeah, he threw that in. It didn't come with a charge cable, but that is just a um, USB cable anyway. And he also threw in a Galaxy Tab 2, which is also working. There we go a while to wake up. Now I have noticed with this, this is actually quite slow. I don't know how old the Tab 2 is, um, but I did have to buy a USB cable for it, because he didn't have a spare one. Apparently his girlfriend's using one of these, and um, he said I could have that one when she's done with it, because she wants to get a new one. But uh, I looked on eBay, and they were like £2 something for a USB cable, so I just bought a new one. So I've got a couple of tablets. The laptops, um, they need attention. I'll just go for them actually. I forgot to bring them through, just bear with me two seconds. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that in the background. That was me knocking things over. Anywho panels and things off both of these. And something just slid out of this. What was it? Oh! SSD fell out of it. So the first one is a Sony Vio. Quite a nice one. It charged up perfectly fine. Again, I went and found a cheap um, charger for this. That didn't come with one, but it's not recognizing um, an operating system. And I actually put in an SSD down there, which is recognized in the BIOS, it's recognized as a 120 gigabyte SSD, um, but just one boot from an OS, it's just not recognizing anything as there. Let's see if it's going to do it. Your VIO failed to start Windows, start BIOS setup. That's what you get, or if I put the SSD in there, that'll ask if I want to um, do a system repair, and it just doesn't do anything. So I don't know if I should try and put... I've got the hard drive here that came out of it. That's why I swapped it. Otherwise I think this would be a very nice, um, not just a touch screen as well. So I've just gone in. The BIOS isn't touchscreen though, unfortunately. If I just go back into that screen, you can see it says it up the top here. Touch the screen. I'm not going to do anything because I haven't got. That's what fell out because I didn't put the screw on it. But if I touch that, start BIOS setup. Think. Okay. I think at some point I will try, I might do it this evening, I might try and um, put a fresh install of Windows on it. Not with a hard drive though. Because the SSD came in the Acer, which I've actually taken it out. And I can't boot this one up because I haven't got the RAM in it. I'm taking it out. But this has got a, um, a screen issue. It's all... I don't know how to describe it. It's like a ghosting effect where you can see double of everything and um, it's sort of blurred as well. 
But when you first turn it on, you get the Acer Spice screen. That looks perfectly fine. Along with the little Windows icon, um, when Windows 10 boots up, you get the little four square window thing with a little square thing. That all looks fine. It's just when you get in the desktop. Um, so yeah, I need to look at that. I'm not familiar with um, touch screens though, so I don't know if it's a touch screen problem, if it's a driver problem. But cosmetically, they are two nice looking laptops. <laughs> but I wouldn't mind getting the Sony going because I've always wanted a Sony laptop. So I really would love this. It's got Windows 8 um, COA on it. See, the reason I didn't fix this in is because. You know, I don't want to fix something and then find it doesn't work. And I never heard of a Sunbo, Sunbo, Sunbow SSD. So <laughs> I'm not sure how well I can trust it. It's probably a cheap Chinese thing. Um, I might actually have something better. I'll have to have a look. So we've got those, um, let me just open them in the can, I'll show you the next item. Now, I'm going to be pissed if YouTube strikes me for showing you this. Because there are real ones on YouTube everywhere. Including videos of people firing real ones. Anyway, my friend had this as well. A Spanish made 2-2 air rifle. And I've got a tin of pellets as well. Now obviously I can't use this here in a flat, I've got it so I can take it over to Mum's and uh, my stepdad's got an air rifle as well so I just thought you know we could set some targets up in the garden one day and maybe when my little brother comes over or something you know we can have a bit of fun up the garden. In fact my workshop is long enough I could probably stick a target at one end on the door and go stand up the other one. <laughs> Needs new telescopic sight though because all the crosshair is broken in this end. It felt bits, basically. <laughs> yeah, so they're what I've got off me buddy. Um, mm -hmm. oh, I love these apple tangos. What I don't like is when you get home you find one of the cans have popped. You're supposed to pay for a pack of six cans, but technically you only pay for five when that happens. I've got these from QD stores. If I got them from Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's don't do the Apple ones for some reason, but if I got them in Sainsbury's, when you use the self-service checkout, you put cans on the um, scales. If one of them has leaked out, those scales will start flashing up and telling you to put the correct item in the bagging area because it's not detecting the right weight. So uh, yeah, if you do buy, you know, like a multi-pack of cans and it does the um, self-service scales do that to you, that'll be why. Check the cans, check that one hasn't popped. Because uh, if you tell a member of staff, you'll also get it discounted. Because I've had staff do that for me as well. Or they will change it for you for another one on the shelf. So. I actually find these um, apple tangos quite refreshing. Anywho, moving on. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, Wednesday. Well, actually, Monday, I was browsing Marketplace, as I, I do most days. Multiple times a day. I don't know. I'll just have a quick look here and there. And I found a vintage bike that I really, really did like the look of. And they only, what, 20 quid for it. Pardon me. It's a pooch. And it's... A Pooch Pursuit. I'm going to have to move the camera this way, I think. And there it is. Now, I think I liked it because I actually like the colour scheme. No. I mean, blue and purple are my two main favourite colours. But I do actually like that shade of green. I think it works well with the white. Now... It is meant to have um, racing bike handlebars on it, you know, the 
the um, drop down one as they call them because well at least going by Google Images when I googled this that's what all the other ones had so someone's definitely changed the handlebars on it which I actually quite like I thought as I don't like wide handlebars like that that I weren't going to like them but I have had gone out for a ride on this and I do like those handlebars they work really well with that frame set um, so naturally the brake levers aren't original that gear lever is not original because it's not a um, well I actually didn't know this either but apparently a bike like this isn't a true racing bike it's what they would actually call a sports bike but Apparently, you know, racing bike just became the common name for them, or road bike, if you prefer. <clears throat> now, it is only a five-speed. There is no front gears apart from, you know, the single one. Um, I did manage to clean the wheels up really well. I was quite impressed at how well that chrome came up, actually. And it is quite a tiny bike. I put the lights on, naturally. <laughs> Although that dynamo is shit, I've got to change that for a different one. It doesn't spin right. It's a bit stiff. Um, and obviously that seat is a lot newer than the bike. It's, it's about mid-1970s, this bike. So it's probably about eight years older than I am. And I actually think that looks a lot better than I do. <laughs> does ride real nice it's a wee bit too tall for me but I can ride it fine that doesn't bother me if I like a bike enough then it doesn't bother me if it's a little bit too big uh, and when I'm at mum's tomorrow I need to find a reflector for the rear mudguard I know exactly what one I want I was going to mount one to the um brake mounting point where they mount on most bikes but not on that one because they're centre pull um, brakes which are actually getting in the way because I want to put a baggage rack on that as well and, that's, and brakes are just going to get in the way I'd have to change the brakes and I've always wanted a bike with those centre pull brakes so I'm not changing them they're staying so the tyres are actually really decent as well. I think someone was actually using that on a regular basis, but apparently it had been stood in the garden for a while. Not used. But yeah, the tyres are actually in really good condition. Normally you'll get an old bike like this and all the tyres are dry rotted and cracked. And but yeah, that's all in really good condition. Um, I did have to bring back from my workshop a couple of clips the, the um, rear brake cable to clip it to the frame because it didn't have any and a bike like this doesn't have um, cable stops welded to the frame you've got to use the old clip that shows its age um, and I need oh for the mudguard stays you know the bits that support your mudguards I needed a couple of little clamps for the front one as well which luckily I did actually have a couple of spare so uh, oh, and I had to change the tube in the rear tyre because I pumped it up and that went flat, but the front one's held there, so apart from those three things, that's all I actually had to do to it to uh, fix it up. <laughs> Other than that, I've oiled the chain and just trying to clean it up as best I can, really. I've got some masking tape on the handlebar to get off as well. Oh, and the handlebar grips I bought new because um, I had one and a half, basically. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the right hand handlebar grip, but there was only like that much in length left. <laughs> it's like a little nub. Yeah, so not sure what happened to that. I just went and got a couple of cheap ones. And got them there quite nicely, so. got to um, oil up the pedals and it may need a new chain because it doesn't quite sit right on those gears but it rides fine so I might just leave it 
So yeah, a definite keeper that one. Right. On my way down to get this bike, because I was, uh, I thought I could ride it back because the tyres looked inflated when I was looking at the photo, but they weren't. So I had to walk there and walk back. But when I was walking to go and get this bike, I passed a charity shop. And in the window, they had a box of vintage Lego. Now, I've not bought loose Lego like that for over a year now. I decided to stop for a couple of reasons. One, I haven't got a lot of room at the minute. And two, I actually just felt like I had enough loose Lego at the moment. You know, and I would just go on eBay or Bricklink or somewhere like that and just buy any parts that I needed for a project as and when I needed it. So, yeah. But this one I decided to buy because there's some bits in there that I didn't have and there's some rare parts in there as well. Um, let me show you the box. It was nice. Ah. Nice big tub. As you can see, I'll try and get it in shot. There's some base plates in there. Um, even though this one's got a chip out of that corner, I still want to build the um, space set that goes on this board. If I can remember what the um, set number is, but it doesn't matter because I'll soon find that. Um, so that board alone piques my interest. So did the um, vintage boat here. Although unfortunately it's got several um, chunks taken out of the plastic on it. Um, I also found a bunch of vintage minifigures in here as well. What I really liked is the fact that there is a whole bunch of space figures. These, this one is an early one, do you know how I know? Because that is not printed on his front, that's a sticker. So this would have been 78, 79 probably. Um, and I found a police torso in here with a sticker on it as well. Which I know for a fact is from that era. But actually that one's a later one because it's printed. I've only just realised that one's um, a sticker on the white one. And there was one more piece. I can't remember if it's actually in here or in the tub up there. Here's another harder to find piece. So I could see most of this when I looked in the window, which is why I bought it. There's a couple of these vintage Lego ladders in there as well. And a load of train bases. Not only were the train bases in there. Let's just get rid of those. There was the light brick for a locomotive. You just plug your 4.5 volt wires in there. And there was all that track and wheels as well. And the stupid thing is that track is probably worth at least two thirds of what I paid for this box, which was 30 quid. But one thing I really wanted was this piece. That is actually quite a rare piece. Now it is a complete trailer. Because there was only a handful of sets back then that actually came with this piece, so it's a difficult piece to find. Especially in a box of loose Lego like this one. So uh, yeah, I was actually pretty pleased that I bought that. I have no idea what set that Lego train track and parts go to. I haven't figured it out yet. Um, definitely 1970s. I thought it was a set from 1972 because that fits perfectly. But the locomotive in that set doesn't have the con rods on the wheels. And I found con rods in here for the wheels. So that ruled out that set. <laughs> So I've still got some investigating to do because I would like to try and build it. Yeah, so I'm actually quite pleased that I 
decided to buy that. And then I've got another tub here for £10 at the car boot today, which was uh, on the Memorial Park here in town. I got two of these, which are probably worth £10 on their own. I'm not kidding, you go on eBay and you search up um, Lego road plates like that, they're not cheap. Especially the old ones like that. It's not as big a box, but I just thought, you know, it's a tenner, why not? Besides, I want to try and build the um, Lego Fabuland car. As two of the main pits look like they're pits, bits rather, not pits, um, appear to be there. I think I could build that. Maybe not with what's in here, but I could probably build it. There's some other Lego Fabuland bits in here as well, like uh, this window piece. Now the Fabuland um, stuff does sell for quite a bit of money as well because it is quite rare and that's a theme I believe that ran just through the 1980s I don't know if I still have but I did have a few of the um, animal figures a few bits of furniture like this as well I've got quite a lot of this stuff uh, yeah you know some extra bricks because when I build my buildings, you know, the homes and the shops and things, I like to build with this style brick. So, sometimes I would buy like a box like this, just because it's got a load of these in it, this one has. And of course, when you're doing like, um, you need to put a floor in a building or something, you'd use plates like that. So, it's handy to have those as well. And of course, there's also doors and windows. I find that when you're building a Lego town, you can never have enough doors and windows. I think, at some point, just to save on some space, I'm actually going to know what I'm going to do it now. I'm literally just going to tip this box into the other one. I want to get these windows bloody boarded up. Um, I was actually, because I want to cut that desk down that's in the bedroom, I was actually going to use the bits from that to try and at least board up this side of the windows. I'm going to have to borrow a circular saw from my stepdad. Because I haven't got any tools like that. And he's got plenty. <laughs> Although, he's now selling a lot of tools and things because he's decided he doesn't want his model railway up in the loft anymore. He wants it out in the um, workshop outside. And to be fair, even this year he's barely ever done anything in the workshop. Um, so I think he's just come to the conclusion now that it, it would be better that way around. Some of the tools are going to go in my workshop, like the air compressor that's going to sit in my workshop. And there's a sandblasting cabinet as well, which really I just want to keep it so I can get those mopeds done. The other thing after that, my stepdad can sell it because I'm not going to need it. <laughs> um, yeah. So he's, he's going to plasterboard all of that out and insulate it all. So I've actually got to go in there because he wants the electrics starting from scratch. So I've got to go in there, I've got to take out all the um, sockets and things. Um, yeah, I'm just going to pull everything out basically and then we'll start again. I don't know what he's going to do with the LED lights up in the loft. Because if he isn't going to be using those, well, actually we might add some in the workshop, in the um, the new railway room. <clears throat> oh, I want to actually get some doors as well. I keep meaning to measure mine up. 
I thought I could just find the nearest ones that I can get in like B and Q's or something if I have to cut them down and I'm sure I can nab my stepdad one weekend and we can do that. There's only three doors here to do. Because uh, I want to keep the cats out of the bedroom when I've got the mother railway down, especially the little white fluff ball. Because I've actually got a telegraph pole at the minute which is just a tall stick because a certain little white fluff ball has chewed the top off <laughs> and she's also pulled two of my tiny little shrubs off as well which I only noticed when I found one on the floor considering I had to walk past it to go to bed and I walked past it several times, I don't know how I didn't notice Yeah, I just thought, you know, when I've got that railway down, I'll have a door to shut and keep the kiddies out. So I was actually kind of thinking, once I've got all that table cut down and removed, I could put my sofas on that wall. They would actually fit in there quite nicely. <clears throat> And there would be a few other things I would need to move as well. I mean, I'm not even sure how I want to build this Lego table yet. Part of me was actually just considering building it just big enough to put a loop of Lego train track around it and then putting it on wheels so I could just push it up in the corner out of the way. I might just go back to as it was originally. Because that way, well I say originally, I'd have more space to get down either side. I'll make sure I leave more space than before. But uh, I will also build it so I can put a lot of these Lego tubs and stuff underneath, just like it was before. Yeah. And I actually don't like the look of these shelves because they're all odd. Apart from the ones on that side, I'm going to leave those ones, but the ones up on this wall, because it's all a mis mishmash of crap, basically. I'm just going to see if I can find some shelves that I can put up there, some brand new ones, or something like that. I don't know if they would actually make anything long enough. I've seen lots of short ones, but I have to look on Amazon or something. Because they are just doing my head in all wavy and... Like I said, it's literally just a mix and match of boards that I've put up there to make some shells. I just think it looks crap. I'd rather have some nice white ones up there. Well, I could paint those white, I suppose. Nah, because a lot of them are warped. Although I might save the, some of those boards because I could use those to board out the shelving underneath the new table. I could even use them boards for that. Nah, I'll just buy some sheets of ply. <laughs> Be easier. Ooh. You know, I have sat here and thought maybe I shouldn't have got rid of the tables in the first place. Maybe I should have just kept them. I don't know if it's just me, but my handle that I used to do this with, with the camera, you know, in the up and down movement, it looks bent. It might be bent because this tripod has fallen over I don't know how many times. Right. Anyway, enough chit chat, let's uh, move on, otherwise this video is just going to get ridiculously long, so that second box of Lego I showed you, I, I think I did mention I got that from the car boot here in town for a tenner, and um, while we were walking around, because my best friend was with me, one of my best friends, I've got two, 
I don't think everyone's a best friend to me. <laughs> yeah, I can't just pick one as a best friend, they're all best friends. Anyway, I'm walking around with him and he was carrying that box of Lego for me and someone said, you know, they've got a box of blocks from Wilco, which apparently is um, in trouble at the minute financially. And it's a fairground, and apparently the only thing missing is the base plates. Apparently it's got a couple of these missing. Um, some of these bags actually look, this one's still sealed, so... I don't even know if this has been opened up and built. But I can use an ordinary Lego base plate to build this on. And I don't care if it's not Lego. I think that would still look nice somewhere on my new Lego City, so... And he only want 50p because he doesn't want to get rid of it, so... And I bet, even brand new, this was, um... Probably about tenner. <laughs> you know, off-branded uh, building bricks... Never does cost a lot. Pardon me. A bit. So, I've now got three sports cameras, believe it or not. I have got this one which I've actually had for a while. I can't remember for the life of me where I got that one from. I have got I'm just wondering if my other casing in here would fit it. This one which I got from a car boot here in town earlier this year, one of the earlier ones, with a bag of uh, brackets and things. And then I bought this one as well. The camera is actually over here, I've had it on charge. Red light's gone off so I don't know if that means it's charged. But it does seem to work. Yeah, I've got a little blue light come on. What I actually like about this one is, unlike that red one I showed you, this has actually got a little screen on the back. Yep, fully charged back. There's even a spare battery for this. I mean, look at this lot. All sorts of clips and things, and you can go on eBay and whatnot and buy other mounts, you know, like a chest strap and whatnot. Um, there's these straps in it, I have no idea what they're for. Yeah, well, it came with the USB cable, it came complete with everything, I only paid £10 for it, so... And again, we've got the uh, weatherproof box for it. I know that won't fit my uh, red camera. It's my red one, the... Um, it hasn't got a clip on the top to hold the door shut. But I thought I could just, you know, stick an elastic band or something around it. So I've got that. Um, I also got this to replace the one in the hallway. Only because this one's got switches on. The one I put in the hallway does not. Um, that switch was sticking there but I'm not sure if it was because um, of the cellophane wrapped around it it's one of these converter sockets um, you can get two gang ones as well which were designed so you would um, convert a single socket to a, a double and it seems like they also made triples as well with a push-on screw cap so you'd have a um, single socket on your wall flush mounted so the back of it would be, and all the electrics would be buried in the wall you'd literally take that off connect the wires on this and screw that straight to it that's what these are designed for just an easy switch over and uh, I've got a feeling because a lot of these are fitted with a 13 amp fuse and that'll be in there like my one out there has got a 13 amp fuse in it. 
made by Volex. I've seen sockets just like this in a lot of older caravans as well. Same style switch. Not actually white like this one, they're more of an off-white colour. But still, I think that, yeah, that was too quick for that, so too quick for that, for the same guy. I've got some of this, just because that was a quid. <laughs> It's like reflective um, sticky warning tape. Um, apparently it's reflective and glows according to this. Warning, you can see day and night. Yeah, it's self-adhesive. Fluorescent and photoluminescent. Shine and glow tape. So I bet the orange... Um, Bet the orange. Yep, the white bit glows in the dark quite well actually when I just did that. So that bit's going to be your reflective bit. I've never seen tape like this before, that's why I bought it and it was only a quid. I thought, yay! What can I stick it on now? Should I stick it on the back of my stepdad's van? <laughs> I don't think he'd appreciate that. Here we go. Now, got some interesting die cast here. One up here because I was gluing it. Um, so, I've got this. Apparently, these came straight from Ford and you could only get them from Ford. Sierra XR4i in a box. We had two of these. The other one did not have XR4i on the bonnet, which is why I got this one. Um, and the reason I've got a rubber band around it is because I've glued this tab back down because it had come unglued after all these years. <clears throat> which I think the glue is pretty much dry. It takes about an hour for that glue I use to dry. So I got that from him. And I will say he was actually charging collector's prices for him, so that that little matchbox car was a tenner. Not a cheapie. In fact, so was this one, because this is quite a sought after collectible one as well. And this box has completely come apart, so I'm going to re-glue that later as well. A mint Ford Capri from Matchbox with box. Rollomatics. But yeah side of it has just come unstuck. Uh, yeah, I think some PVA glue on that as well. Maybe with the car in there just to sit on the tab. But, uh, you know, if you go on eBay, you wouldn't pay less than a £10 for either of these, either of these two, anyway. Uh, I've got a few more from that guy as well, but I've got this as well. A motor grater. Made by Majorette. In bloody good condition as well. I just thought that was interesting. I didn't know Majorette made such things, so... I can't remember what I actually paid for that. And from the same lady, I got this just because I liked it. <laughs> the Zuzu Crane. A fair bit of weight to that, actually. And yeah, that was £3. I was got a £3 sticker on it, or did have, I'll just do it off. Ah, that bit of plastic has come out of place. Can I bend that enough to get that in back in place? It's that bit, look. I see the little tab hole down the bottom there, maybe. Ooh. Uh, that goes there. then that won't go on top.
Not really sure what's going on here, to be honest. Has that got to shunt back a little bit? Ah! There we go, I've done it. This yellow body was a bit too far that way, so I just had to nudge it back. There we go. Ooh, didn't even realise it did that. I don't know who it's made by, though. It's got a die-cast base on it. Made in Hong Kong. No, it doesn't. It's got Zuzu written on it. Mm. Nice little model crane, though. That's why I got it. And this, which I'm probably going to do a custom job, paint job on it, because I've already got this. I didn't realise, but, you know, for a few quid. Why not? Team Porsche. Uh, oh. These were 50p each, and as I've got angle grinders back at the workshop, I thought they'd be handy. That might be handy to clean up the mopeds and whatnot. A little uh, flapper disc. Uh, one, two, three, four, five of these discs, and I don't actually know what they're for. Um, I don't think they're for cutting. It does say steel on them, so maybe they are for cutting. Yeah, it's just got steel written on it in several languages, so they probably are for um, steel. Quite thick ones though. A lot thicker than the ones um, my stepdad's got. He bought a load of Parkside ones from Little. Yeah, like I said, 50p each for three quid. Right, now... Apart from two of these, these two... So I've got another Ford Granada from, from Maisto. I didn't know they did any others, or any of these in any other colour. The only ones from Maisto I've ever seen are the white ones with the red cross, cross on it, the British red cross ones. But I got this one because um, I've never seen a blue one with Granada on the hood. And, of course, Mustang. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Mustang. Right, so I've got three more in here, which I got from... That guy. Actually, I actually think there's another one here that I got... I can't remember where I got this one from, actually. I got this from the same place I got the Mustang and Ford from. Actually, I actually think it didn't. I think it cost me a quid. Anyway. I've got another one of these BMWs, because this is mint compared to the one I've already got in the bedroom. And this was only three quid. Oh, that's right, I've just remembered. That one I got with the Mustang. The Ford Granada I got from the same guy I got the um, Ford Sierra and whatnot from. He had a lot of Fords for sale. I'm guessing he was a bit of a Ford fan. Um, got this Corgi Ford Transit as well. I've got it in green, I've got it in blue, and I've got it in yellow with the black windows, but I have never ever seen a red one with transparent blue windows so I think for me at least that was worth the three quid so each of those vehicles were three quid and this one was a Ford Escort police car in very you know what I'm actually going to say mint condition because I can't see a mark on it he did have another Escort there from Corgi but I've already got it it should be, I think, over there on the shelf. I'm going to have it now. <laughs> yep, here it is. So wish I could find a four-door red one. But, you know, these model makers, they only do the three doors, it seems. Yeah, you had another one of these there. Got 
two escorts. It's a bit of a fun, um, a fun fact for you. Because back in the day, so many police cars were blue with white doors. Um, when photos were taken and published in local newspapers and whatnot, it almost made them look black and white. Which is actually where the term panda car came from. So if you hear anybody you know, call these old police cars a panda car, that's where it came from, because of the photos in the newspapers. A little fun fact, oh, I've just realised Corgi didn't put a tow bar on this one. They actually used their brains because police cars wouldn't have had a tow bar. This one's got one. I just left it off on this one. That's actually nice to see that they've actually, you know, paid that much attention. That they haven't just recoloured, you know, a standard car stick and put police on it. And a blue light on the roof. <laughs> Just think back then, that's all police car, most police cars would have had just a single blue beacon. That is well oversized for the police car though. <laughs> that's not quite a scale. <laughs> I'm just guessing Corgi cool, just had like a default sized beacon like that, but they stuck on a lot of their models. Because there's a number of various models that have that sort of beacon on. I've got a transit van in the bedroom, which has got a couple of those on in amber. And they did a fire truck as well that had that on. Actually, now that I look at it, it is a little bit on the big side, but not too big. Yeah, um, oh, one more thing that I actually got from the car boot. I'm going to have to turn the camera for this. Because uh, I was surprised to actually find one of these at a car boot sale, let alone a car boot sale here in town. It's this thing. This is now my second one. This is number two. And it is... I'll have to come back a bit. Um, I'm just stand like that for a second. I'm going to topple over on me. There we go. It is a railway marker board. A Dorman Smith, it's a Mark 1, we've got a Mark 2 hanging up in the hallway. 25 quid. Now unfortunately this one doesn't work. Um, it's fixable, I just haven't got the bit I need to fix it. So, I tried to fix it, but the problem is when I opened the lamp up, I when I was cleaning the battery contacts um, with my rotary tool, the brush accidentally caught a couple of wires and pulled one out of the switch and uh, when I went to put the wires back in the switch I should have thought, yeah that's easy enough, you know, it's just a screw terminal I can't actually find the bits now, but uh, yeah, here's a couple of the bits <laughs> it just disintegrated in my hand, so I need a new one of these I don't think this would have worked anyway looking at them terminals, they're just too much corrosion and crap on them, so I don't think it was a bad thing. So, uh, yeah, that's all that's in here. There's two of these lamps. Top lamp, bottom lamp. Two batteries go in this one. They connect with the cable. And then they flash in sync. Um, now I have, I did, <laughs> when I had the circuit out of this earlier, I did roughly sort of bodge up a test rig with a couple of six volt batteries so I can actually test it and it does work. Um, two of the wires have come off one of the battery contacts so I've got to solder those back on somehow and then just find another one of those button switches. This one works. Now I can't win with either of these because these lamps are actually in better condition cosmetically than the two lamps in my other one which is in the bedroom but the case in my other one in the bedroom is cleaner than this one, but it has got one of the handles broken. But the case actually looks a lot cleaner. I think this one would actually clean up. But yeah, they would literally just be put at the side of a railway line like that. 
and yes these do have meanings amber entry to person in charge of possession possessions area this is what they actually call a possession lamp um, you can get like single ones as well that they used to stick right in the middle of the track to close the track so that's what amber means obviously on the outside it's got what the red means okay we're here getting a freaking one uh, red is for entry to engineering supervisors area dirty side but like I said I think that would actually clean up and it came with the lamp key as well which is on the mess of a desk somewhere but, uh, that was 25 pounds for that and these on eBay um, do sell for a lot more than that and then you've got obviously quite a lot on postage because this is heavy in fact a lot of the ones I see on eBay are collection only because they are Pretty heavy. That hasn't got batteries in it, but that is bloody heavy. I suppose it needs to be if you think about it, because that's going to be sitting on the track in most weathers. So it's got to have some weight in it to, um, you know, withstand the wind. I mean, the wind and whatnot. So, yeah, I'm actually glad um, I found a second one. don't really need to. <laughs> um, maybe in the future, you know, I might be up for a trade with that one. Once I've got it working, I'm not going to trade it while it doesn't work. I will uh, get it all fixed up and what have you. Oh! I did um, see the diecast guy during the week as well, and got a load of diecast from there. I got box full through there. I've got a lot in the bedroom actually to go through, but I've got this as well in that lovely little matchbox van. In lovely condition. It's only rock and roll. might go up over there actually when I have a sort out. Ooh, uh, I don't think there's anything else. I'm just a bit of a quick look around. No, I don't think I missed anything. Really, I'm looking forward to getting the Lego seat back in here. Though. Mm. I need to leave an area to put the cat tower, preferably in here. I'm gonna have to rack my brains, I think. Because if I want the cat carry the cat tower in here, you have to find a home for at least one of the display cabinets that's on that wall. Hmm. Well, I've got a lot of thinking to do, haven't I? So anyway thanks a lot for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed the video um i hope you'll stay tuned and uh, follow for more progress that's the thing i should never have got rid of it but oh well here we are <laughs> anyway um 
There'll be links in the video description, as I mentioned earlier, for um, my eBay, because I'm going to put some stuff up on eBay as well, so if you're interested, feel free to check that out. Um, and of course, my Discord server, um, my Twitch channel, because I do want to do live streams at weekends, hopefully. As and when I can, it won't be a regular thing. Um, oh, and my other two YouTube channels. So my gaming channels, so if you like anything gaming, feel free to check that out. And the Lego channel, I'm going to blow the cobwebs off of that channel and start uploading to that. In fact, what I might do is put this footage over to the computer, so that's ready. And... Um, get a video for the LEGO channel recorded. Yeah, so... Hmm. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!